fires have a very dramatic effect on the quality of water and also some effect on the quantity of water and some effect also on the timing of water. The big issue with fires is the severity of the fire. If a fire burns at high severity, that means that it completely consumes all the needles on the trees, but more importantly, it burns all the organic matter off the surface. So there's no more surface vegetation, there's no more litter, all you have is bare soil. The main issue is that we've had a couple of rainstorms and we see that the Poudre River comes up very dark, sediment-laden with a lot of just mineral sediment and ash. And that ends up being just washed off of hill slopes during a rainstorm where vegetation would have normally allowed water to seep slowly and infiltrate into the soil. We're now getting it washed downstream very quickly. All the ash the, is on the surface is very mobile. The wind will move it. Any amount of surface runoff will take that ash, put it into the river, cause the water to be black. That changes, obviously, the color, the quality, um, which is a huge concern for the water users. Nobody wants to turn on their tap and have black water coming out of their tap. So that's kind of what the big concern is and sediment that's kind of overwhelming um, the ability to treat it. So every time the river water uh, flow changes, it brings that sediment into the water treatment plant and changes that turbidity. It's been very clean though throughout the winter and most of the spring. Now with the rain and the snow melt starting, it's changing the water quality up in the pooter right now. So it's just a challenge for us to treat and we want to make sure that we're providing that safe drinking water for everyone at all times. So that's the big impact, is a very changed landscape from a forested, vegetated cover to a slick, almost parking lot-like surface where it just blasts off of there, picks up big boulders potentially, and comes flying down with a lot of sediment and a lot of ash in it, and that all gets deposited in the drainage ways, erodes the drainage ways severely in a lot of instances, winds up in the Poudre River, which is the drinking water source for over 300,000 people. In 2012, there was no water taken from the Poudre River for roughly 100 days. This is first because of the fact that they simply couldn't get up the canyon because of the fire, couldn't get access to their facilities and their diversions, and second, because there was so much ash. Again, the first storm after the fire was only five days after it was contained on 6th of July. The 6th, 7th, 8th July all had very big storms. They caused the water to turn black, and it stayed black for a lot of the summer. Well, we're all dealing with really the same impact. We've had our landscape drastically changed. What, in my opinion, the biggest impact is that its response to rainfall and runoff has been drastically changed. Because if you've been up in the forest and it rains, we can have a pretty healthy rain, and you don't see huge amounts of waters running off those really steep hill slopes because there's that layer of litter and duff, pine duff, that organic material that's been, been laid down there. And then there's the trees and the shrubs and everything else, the root system that when it rains up there, it holds it back and it kind of lets it go out gradually. And that's how that environment has evolved. So again, a high severity fire not only removes the tree canopy, but it also severely alters the surface of the soil and the soil physical properties. A moderate severity fire will often again kill all the trees, but it generally won't alter the physical properties of the soil so much. It may remove all the surface litter, all the surface vegetation, but it doesn't alter the mineral soil.